My name is Mayang Chang, and on behalf of Audi India, I would like to welcome all of you, our guests, our friends, and may I say, our family, to the very first edition of Visionarium, Visionarium 2020. Chale pir. Let's get this event into first gear. This year has been a very extraordinary one. Matlab, iske liye jo bhi adjectives use karein, it's difficult to define this year. It's been good, it's been bad, it's been heratangez, it's been surprising. It has also taught us that we are capable of so much more. But one thing that has been common through most of us is that we have been so occupied with the present, with the today, with what's happening around us. We are more keen on survival right now than anything else. But ironically, this is also the time when we have to ensure that we do not lose focus of the future. We have to have that eye on the future. We have to do today to ensure that our tomorrow is better, brighter, and most importantly, more hopeful than today. And that is the goal of Audi India's Visionary on 2020. Over the next few days, we will be having some very interesting conversations with some amazing personalities. These are people who demonstrate on a daily basis, sir of kabi kabi on a daily basis, how to live your best life. And that's amazing, right? They are going to be sharing their experiences with us. We will get to know what is their success mantra, what keeps them pumped up, what keeps them inspired, motivated, what helps them follow their passion and what is their vision for the future. And finally, of course, you are part of this conversation as well. So you get to ask them questions, anything that is running through your mind regarding them, regarding their personality, regarding their dedication to the art, you can ask them. So abhi ke abhi, pen uthalo, kagaz rakhlo. You can write down those questions and we will field them towards the end of the session where uh, our guest will answer as many questions as possible. All right, let's kickstart the session then. Right now, to start the session, I would like to invite Mr. Balbir Singh Dhillon, the head of Audi India, who is going to join us and introduce today's topic. Mr. Balbir, all yours. Thank you, Chang. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, first of all, from my side, a very warm welcome to all the participants and attendees. Uh, very happy to have you in Audi family. We are super excited about the uh, Visionarium. This is a new initiative that we are taking today. Uh, and I'm sure that you will like this. Uh, we have an exciting lineup of speakers starting with Virat today. I am very much looking forward to it and, and I hope hand it over back to you so that you can take it forward. And uh, thank you once again to all of you joining us today and wish you a great session today. Thank you. Thank you very much, much Mr. Balbir. Uh, we are going to have a great session because as you already mentioned, we have a very special guest. Now, we have, uh, we're talking about performance at its peak today on the Visionarium 2020, the first session ever, right? And uh, when we talk about performance at its peak, we are usually, obviously, we are also talking about Audi itself because they create some mean machines. But behind those mean machines, behind those really, really beautiful pieces of art is the most fascinating machine that is the human body. Now, we know that when it is in peak, condition, the human body can perform amazing, almost impossible seeming facts. But what we usually don't think about is how much being in great shape, being fit affects everything else about you from the way people look at you, from the way you yourself look at yourself and something as integral as your personality. Everything changes for the better once you are in a fit state of mind and body, even leadership. When you're fit, obviously you feel great about yourself. You have the self-confidence. People perceive you differently and it gives you the clarity to deal with people and with circumstances and situations. And that is one of the things that we are going to discuss here today, how fitness can affect your leadership skills. In this session, we are going to speak to someone whose name has already been revealed, but let me just give a very, very good introduction because he's one of my favorite players and he's attained so much with his hard work with his dedication, and he's been unrelenting in the way he just wants to win to play, to play to win. He's in that peak of holistic fitness, and he has used it to lead his team to the very pinnacle of success. It's my pleasure to welcome the captain of the Indian cricket team, an inspiring player and a human being. It's my pleasure to welcome you, Virat Kohli. 
Hi, hi, Jan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, Virat. How are you doing? Okay, perfect. I'm I'm very good. Thank you. Thanks for such a sweet introduction. I I um, I'm glad to be here talking to so many people, uh, having a conversation with you. I think it's a great initiative by Audi um, to keep people inspired with some of the things that um, today I can speak, and the others who are going to come on the on the Visionarium can also um, you know share and and. Um, just, just yeah. give some insight into um, what other things that can be learned from each other. I think, um, as you rightly pointed out some time back, that this year has been all about um, supporting each other, moving forward in strength, and learning from each other how to survive firstly, but then again, um, how to find ways to move forward in life. And um, yeah, I'm just delighted to be here to have a conversation um, on similar lines and to have a chat with you. I'm so glad that you're here, Virat, because uh, we are definitely going to learn a lot from you. Bahut sare sawal hain, mere bhi hain. Uh, everybody who's joined us in this session, they have questions as well. Uh, but first up, you've had a very long association with Audi. And I know that your association goes beyond mere obligation. I mean, uh, we've seen a lot of videos of you driving your Audi around. And from the looks of it, you really enjoyed it. So when did this association start? Uh, the association has uh, been a long one with Audi. I mean, um, I, I remember before the association started in 2012, I, I bought my first Audi. Um, okay. And I totally fell in love with the car. Um, and then it so happened that after some time, you know, the association came up. And for me, it was a no brainer because I, I experienced, um, you know, what it what it what it's like to drive an Audi car. And uh, what the brand means. So I already knew um, mm -hmm. so much about the brand. And then my philosophy was, was similar moving forward in my career, um, you know, striving for excellence, uh, being precise, being professional, um, delivering um, when it matters and what matters to people, um, having right. the capacity and the vision to do so. So the association was pretty organic. And that's, that's why, um, you know, it's been ongoing for a long time. And there have never been any kind of um, revaluations from either end. It's it's been streamlined that we we're gonna continue to have this association, and it's been pretty seamless. So I've had so much fun uh, being associated with Audi, and uh, I continue to do so. We've done some fun campaigns as well. I've driven the best Audi cars there are on offer, mm -hmm. and um, I totally <laughs> totally love love Audi cars, and it's it's just been a beautiful experience. Great bunch of people. Um, there have been a few management changes, but all the people have been amazing. Now, Mr. Balbir is here. He's he's also such a sweet guy. So I've had such a great time with Audi, and um, yeah, it's it's been a wonderful association. Now they're going to be so happy to hear this that it is an organic uh, association and that you love it. And yeah. sign away, sign Virat on for many many years, like a <laughs> decade or two decades. He should still be there with us because, uh, as you said. Uh, what Audi stands for, there's a lot that you stand for as well. That excellence, the drive is there. So that is really, really good. Uh, you don't have to pretend. It's just there. It's it's so beautiful in association. Now, uh, you've uh, spoken about your love for the brand. You've spoken about how you've loved driving some of the cars. And uh, that enthusiasm, it's not just on the road. We've seen that on the field. Ever since you broke through on the scene, uh, you've always you know, given your best and the results are there for everybody to see. But uh, from what I've heard, it wasn't always like that before you broke through. Uh, what was the turning point for you, which which really kind of inspired you, motivated you that this is what has to happen now with the Virat Kohli? Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, I came through, I came through uh, with my own journey with my own path. Um, I wasn't in the typical sort of mold, which which you would see, um, or the society expects you to be. I had tattoos. I had, you know, things that I, that I did on my own, and it wasn't. It was frowned <laughs> upon uh, initially, to be honest. Um, but one thing I knew was I, I need to be myself. If if I'm not myself, then I cannot present uh, my total being my total self on the field and if i don't do that True. then i'm doing injustice to the team so i was always um, 
very very honest and open about whatever i did and however i was it might not have been right but it was what i wanted to be um i never tried to be someone that i wasn't um but that was initial mm-hmm. years then as soon as you know things started moving forward i started feeling like okay i belong at this level and i can play um cricket at the highest level for a long time then it was about okay larger vision where where do i see, want to see the indian cricket team heading um Correct. and for that i need to firstly make changes within me it's easy talking about things but i think it's it's much harder doing those things and putting them into action so i clearly remember it was 2012 when we had just finished the ipl and i hadn't um had a great season with the bat in the ipl and i was my eating habits my sleeping habits everything was very very bad mm-hmm. and I, i was in total total horrible shape and i came back home and i came out of the shower and i just looked at myself and i felt like there's no way i can continue like this this is not the example i should be setting as a as an okay. elite level sportsman in india i mean we I, we absolutely compete at the highest level of sport if you talk about our country and i thought to myself no this is this is not the right outlook um and from that day onwards i changed everything about my diet my training everything and then i started seeing the benefits of of what that did to mm-hmm. me mentally uh, physically yes but mentally i was so much more optimistic positive i knew i had more more capabilities of moving well physically of thinking clearly because my body mm-hmm. was lighter everything was just flowing um and i felt like wow this is amazing and this is actually the most basic requirement for me as a sportsman but then over a period of time um you know our team was young when when i took over from ms we were going through a transition then i thought okay this is the direction we need to head um as a team because if you want to compete at the highest level yes we don't have the experience but we can be as fit as anyone else and if you're fit then we can be competitive Absolutely. over five days of test cricket um and then magical things started happening we started beating teams we started competing everywhere and everyone was like this is amazing and we just didn't let go of it and um, yeah that that taught me a huge lesson that there's one thing to talk about things and then there's another to actually go out there and and make those things happen put them into action and and yeah 2012 was the turning point straight after the ipl and from then on mm-hmm. it's just become second nature to me now i i i won't miss a training session i'd rather miss practice than a training session <laughs> okay all right that is a good uh, approach to take but virat uh... it's uh, you know when we hear it at this and now you started this in 2012 that was a turning point in 2020 everybody is seeing the benefits of it with you with the team we do have a very agile team right now which is very quick between the wickets uh, they're not afraid to throw themselves on the field uh, but for everybody for you and for the team and whoever else you inspire there are millions of them out there do you think that there was a phase even after 2012 that you've decided ki abhi mujhe badalna hai खुद के लिए टीम के लिए बाकियों के लिए बट इट वॉज इट्स ऑब्वियसली नॉट सो इजी टू जस्ट डू दिस ओवर नाइट राइट वर द एनी स्ट्रगल्स और वर द एनी प्रॉब्लम वेन यू आर ट्राइंग टू मोटिवेट योर सेल्फ बट यूर लाइक आफ्टर सेशन और आफ्टर कपल ऑफ ट्रेनिंग सेशन यू लाइक माई गॉट दिस इज हार्ड इवन फॉर मी टू बी ऑनेस्ट एट अ पर्सनल लेवल आई ऑलवेज थॉट दैट आई एम नेवर गोन पुट एनी लिमिटेशन टू हाउ मच आई कैन डू um i feel somewhere we already put so many limitations on our abilities and capabilities either it's mental or mm-hmm. physical that we never able to achieve or realize our our true potential how good we can be as as individuals you know there's there's no limit to how good a human being can be because you're learning every day you're getting better every day yes there'll be ups Correct. and downs as well but if you put tabs on saying okay this is so much that i can do mentally you've put that block already and then your body will not react right to anything beyond it um if you think about um the fact that you're actually like an open canvas and you're ready for everything anything anything that comes your way you have the ability to do it it's optimism it's it's thinking positively it's having belief in in even your training ability it's not just for results on the field it's very easy to think and believe for something mm-hmm. which is giving you instant result but um i think it's a constant process to to believe in things that do not give you an instant result that you understand are done for the larger reason that are done day on a daily basis mm-hmm. to stack it up slowly 
so then it becomes a kingdom and then you know people can start benefiting from it it becomes a culture it becomes um, a vision that comes to life um, so for that i think if if we just look to improve every day whether for me it was about physical fitness and you know thinking right and then mm-hmm. eventually having those results on the field uh, i think if we can focus on our overall development on a daily basis saying i have a lot of capability to become a better person to become better physically to think better mentally and to achieve anything that i i possibly can in my profession yeah i think we should just open ourselves up to all kinds of possibilities um and not just leave it to result based things because when we know we have a chance of failure invariably we get up and we say okay let's 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 go we have to work hard now but it's the things that right. don't give you an instant result are the ones that are the most important because that give you such a grounding and consistency in life and then the results take care of themselves so yeah my focus was always about how much ever i can give physically till the time i fall i'm going to train and i'm going to give all my effort and all my all my potential to everything involved in in this cricket team and for indian indian cricket team and the vision that i had um for the team moving forward so this is about uh, how you inspire yourself and uh, of course it's not easy at all because uh, everybody who's watching this they know that it's easy to say ki main ye kar lunga main wo kar lunga but to motivate yourself is always a difficult thing which you've gotten ahead of that's great uh, but it's not just about you you know that as the captain you know that you have the expectations of so many people you have uh, to run the team as well you have to inspire them by example which you're doing but on a very personal level with them how do you also motivate your team members and as a by product of that even though you may not have a direct contact with let's say the general public how do you inspire them to adopt this healthier lifestyle look um firstly you have to make people understand that this is beneficial for what you're doing right it's very important to put mm-hmm. things into perspective because not everyone's going to react to the fact that you have a chance of improving every day if people understand that this has been done to finally achieve something that is related to your profession or you know another goal in life then they start working towards it because they have a end result already which is far Correct. off but then they understand the path for it um and they realize okay this is what i need to do from now to 6 months time 8 months time and then i'll be a totally different cricketer or in any other profession i'll be able to think better i'll be able to take smarter decisions i'll be more confident about myself whatever it might be um so that's the path you take initially but then everyone realizes when they start seeing the benefits of it um on the field especially i can talk from the team's point of view then guys right. understand then they get a taste of it then they're like wow this is amazing cuz we never thought that we could be as good physically or as capable of doing the things that we are doing right now it's a reality today we could not have thought about it um so they eventually end up making it a lifestyle choice so then your job's done because once once you tell them that this is going to work and it works then they don't mm-hmm. let go of it so you need to you need to persist you need to be patient you need to have constant chats with them try and motivate them at difficult times and say keep going good things will happen keep going good things will happen and when they click there's no looking back from it cuz guys realize you know what i'm not letting go of this because i feel like a million dollars and i i feel confident when i step onto the field i don't want to feel doubtful of can i dive for the ball can i bowl seven overs in a row right. can i bat for 170 runs all those things are taken care of can i make a brilliant play when the team wants me to can i have a, a, a do a great run out on the field take a half chance to win us the game win us a very important game when you realize you can have all of those things and they start happening on the field that's your job done so i think the 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 persistence that's required to get them till that stage where things start becoming results is the difficult part when that's done then it becomes a team culture that's great it becomes a team culture it becomes a society culture and hopefully it becomes a national culture as well that would be so cool uh yeah. we have uh, spoken about all of this and as you said when somebody has adopted this as a lifestyle it is not only going to help them at work but also in their general life but when we speak about professional athletes we speak about a sports person i think one other thing that it would also help in is minimizing injuries if i'm not wrong right yeah that's absolutely right i mean i 
I know for a fact that I've been playing all three formats and the IPL since 2012. And apart from mm -hmm. taking physical breaks, <clears throat> just to refresh myself, because I'm probably going on more than, you know, anyone else for the last so many years. You need to refresh yourself. You need yeah. to walk away from the game, think clearly, come back. Uh, apart from that, there hasn't been a time where I felt like, you know what, I'm struggling physically. I've never struggled physically. It's all about mentally refreshing yourself and coming back. Um, and right. if you're physically fit, it allows you to keep driving that culture forward. Because as I said, I can, I can have conversations, I can have chats, but to see someone do something physically is a totally different impact altogether. And I, to, I fully believe in that. If I want guys to dive around, I'll be the first guy at training diving around. I won't, I won't just beat around mm -hmm. the bush and tell them to do something which I can't follow. Um, so for that, I need to be at the peak physical condition. I understand that responsibilities is way larger than just taking care of my body now. It's about being fit, being there for the team, showing um, the, the physical work day in, day out, because I'm in charge of, of taking that culture forward. So, um, so the motivation becomes bigger, you know, your effort becomes bigger than your eating habits, then your lifestyle choices. Everything is designed according to how can you be the best version of yourself at practice, at game time, every single time uh, throughout the year. Well, listening to you speak, Virat, it feels almost redundant to ask you this question now because you're so highly motivated. Have there been times when Virat has said that, you know what, they are both okay. I, I, I just can't do this. I just want to give up. Of course, you get back because we've seen those results. We've ever seen Virat give up at any point of time, at least in the public perception. But personally, have there been times when you felt that, you know what, I'm close to not wanting to do this or I'm not feeling it. I'm feeling a little low on motivation. How do you bounce back from that? Because uh, Virat, the batsman, the captain is a great, great person, but he's also human after all. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, there are many times that you feel like things are getting too much. Also, you have to understand that it's not just about being a batsman or a captain or a leader. It's the other stuff that comes along with it. Um, you know, when you step out for a coffee, mm -hmm. it's like it's hectic. It's not as simple as just walking, just taking a stroll and no one bothering you. So there's so many yeah. layers of things yeah. that get to you eventually. Um, and I feel the most, imp I mean, I'm as vulnerable as anyone else. I mean, I'm a human being at the end of the day, but um, it's how you choose to come back from it is what matters. You are going to feel bad. You are going to feel low. You are going to feel down. There's no rocket science. There's no denial. I mean, there's no one who can mm -hmm. say that I never felt bad or upset or demotivated in life. Firstly, I think it's very important not to be in denial of it. It's important to recognize it initially and have a conversation uh, with your close people yeah. that this is how I'm feeling. And I need to find a way out, you know, put things back into perspective um, and then just just release and, and let go and, and just do what's right and slowly step step forward and move on from there. That's very, very important. Uh, secondly, you have to make a choice whether you want to surrender to it and not mm -hmm. get back up again at all. Or you tell yourself, OK, OK, I did not question anything when things were going fine for me. So. Why am I questioning now when things are going bad for me? Um, you know, so it's very important to be grateful um, because the bad times are the ones that actually teach you so much more about what is the right way to move forward in life, not just about your profession. I think any bad phase in any profession is to teach you about life. It's got nothing to do with success and failure. Success and failure is so mm -hmm. fragile, so so inconsistent. It's 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 so, you know, it's unpredictable. You have no idea whether you're going to succeed or fail, but it's the learnings you take from it that help you to move forward in life in the right manner so that you stay as balanced as possible. Um, and that's been my biggest learning. Um, but yeah, I will always make the choice to come back, um, step onto the field or, you know, in, in life in general, take the positive route, um, accept things that are going wrong, accept mistakes and then work on them and move forward. If we keep denying mistakes, I don't think there's any growth in that. And I've gone through phases when I've done that, um, but I've never taken a backward step. And Correct. that's always kept me in good stead.
Brad, do you also feel that uh, handling all of this, as you said, off the field and not just as a captain or leader, uh, that has uh, a, a very important tie in with the importance of mental fitness, something that has come in sharp focus in the recent past? Uh, because it's not just yeah. about that I'll go today and I'll perform well at my job. It's also about so many other things that tie in with that. Yep. I, I totally agree. I mean, look, I will never tell anyone to give up. I will never tell anyone to feel vulnerable when they're not feeling vulnerable. It's a fine line. Okay. I mean, we can, we can very well sit at home and say, you know what, I'm not feeling great. But that also could be a denial of, of wanting to encounter things that are difficult. only when you mm-hmm. have done everything possible in your in your capability and your abilities is the time you sit back and say you know what i'm actually not able to find a way out but we have to be honest to ourselves and ask ourselves have i tried everything possible if the answer is yes Correct. and still you're not feeling great there is no shame in telling your boss telling your teammates telling your life partner whoever you want to tell it to you know what i'm i'm actually feeling very very bad i'm feeling pathetic and i just need a break from from mm-hmm. everything i think it's a very very healthy way to look at things um and mental stress mental health is such a such a big factor that if you're not if you're not clear mentally if you're not feeling great mentally there's literally no point in doing things that you're doing um so i i would encourage everyone to um take a break whenever they feel like it like they they really need one yeah. uh but be honest about the efforts that you put in you know look in the mirror and and ask yourself have i done everything possible in my ability and if the answer is yes absolutely everyone should have enough space to be refreshed mentally and put their best intent best effort for whatever work or profession they are in yeah let's hope everybody is listening to that because uh, we've always thought that uh हेल्थ इज जस्ट अबाउट योर बॉडी एंड अगर सबको स्कूल का याद हो जो भी हम जितना भी इतने साल पहले का कुछ याद है देन हेल्थ वॉज ऑलवेज अबाउट फिजिकल एंड मेंटल फिटनेस सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर स्पीकिंग अबाउट दैट इज वेल विराट नाउ समथिंग दैट कीप्स द माइंड वेरी वेरी हैप्पी एट टाइम्स ऑफकोर्स इज खाना ओके एंड वी नो दैट यू हैव सेड नमस्ते टू अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड यू सेड कि नहीं भाई I am not going to face you anymore because you're tasty, you're lovely. I might be mentally drooling for you, but I can't have those. So, sometimes it happens that Virat today, with all his uh, discipline in place, with all his dietary restrictions, still craves for certain things. So, how do you get rid of that lalach? Well, lalach, lalach, to remain there. Look, uh, of course, I crave things. I mean, it's not like I, I see something and I feel like. nahi yaar ye i don't feel like eating it it's not like that i don't get that with meat anymore ever since i became vegetarian i don't i don't crave mm-hmm. meat or seafood or anything like that anymore um but if there's something delicious that i used to eat as a child um i every now and then have cravings for it i mean i would still right. every now and then have a cheat meal but i won't extend it to a, a full cheat day you know it's it's about prioritizing okay. and and categorizing things i mean i would probably have a cheat meal for for example after an odi game where i've scored runs where i've done a full session of fielding and my body is absolutely cooked it'll be a brunch the next day it'll be a combination of breakfast and lunch right. which will be a cheat meal so i'm probably doing two meals and a light soup at dinner but the first meal might be a cheat meal so it's about prioritizing right. how much calories you are taking in um and make it as healthy as possible but i do i do fulfill i do entertain my cravings every now and then but it's only after i've done enough effort on the field that i i treat myself right. with that one little meal that okay that that gives me that satisfaction of ha theek hai i felt like it so i've eaten it on holiday <laughs> yes a few days but um while i'm playing this is basically my my routine to go about my cheat meals yeah reward your body when it needs it when it deserves it exactly. right that's actually lekin ek ek delhi wale ke liye ek punjabi ke liye it must have been very very difficult like when i speak about the turning point of course the turning point was that yes you wanted results but uh, what was also the turning point in which you realized that you know what as much as i love food i will have to move away from certain things and go for a particular diet yeah um During that time, I felt like my eating habits were horrible, as I mentioned. Um, and you know, honestly, no one should have 
to tell you this playing at the highest level in sport in mm-hmm. general you know that you need to eat right you need to train right you need to take care of your recovery i mean we are actually few of the most privileged uh, sports people that get to compete at this level um, it is a requirement it is a necessity in my eyes it is yeah. not something that needs to be told someone strictly that you have to eat well you have to train i mean it's a no brainer you're playing sport and you have to be at your at your physical best um recovery wise routine wise you know everything has to be like a system running in a proper manner so i changed my eating habits straight away um i used to eat meat okay. then so i used to eat boiled chicken i used to make my own um, oats in the morning with boiled water um i cut down uh-huh. so many things so many things and I, sometimes i used to feel like going to sleep at night i'm just going to chew these bed sheets off because i was so hungry sometimes but then i would eat dry chana <laughs> instead of you know snacking on chips and stuff like that but then eventually i toiled i toiled for a bit i worked hard i i went through that for a month and a half two months and then two and a half months onwards i started seeing the results and i was like you know what this is actually amazing and i'm not going back to my old routines um and mm-hmm. eventually i realized that um, that is exactly what i required um to be able to be my best self slowly but surely i'm going to be uh, able to become the player that i wanted to become and keep on playing and performing for my country because i don't want to lose out right. in any way um lose out the opportunity to provide for my team and for that i need to be my best self i need to be fit i need to be available every game for selection yeah. to play um so that that was my motivation okay <laughs> but with all of this are you that person now in the family who says oh ho kitna tel hai yaar puriyon mein kya kha rahe ho itna sugar hai wagera wagera does that happen in the family and do people like really like yaar yeah, virat yaar please yaar <laughs> does that happen <laughs> look uh, me and anushka when we are at home um we eat very healthy it's when we go to see mm-hmm. um, you know family in in delhi um it, or um you know yeah mostly family in delhi when we go to see them that's when i have to literally say please make things healthy <laughs> because <laughs> my mom will my mom will just you know want to let loose a little bit thode parathe kha lo kuch khate nahi ho you know itne patle ho gaye like for her being fit means sook gaye ho kamzor lag rahe ho you know so she has to see she has to see presence when you walk in yeah physical presence which i have to make her understand it's it's not possible so yeah i have to i have to fight my way through it a little bit but yeah I, i'm that guy now who says tel nahi hona chahiye healthy banao and yeah they don't get annoyed they mm-hmm. understand it but my, my only my mom gets a bit aise thodi na hota hai thoda to khana chahiye and all that but yeah, it's all good <laughs> and the moms are always going to be like that because they love to feed unko bahut acha lagta hai apne bachcho ke liye khana banana and bachcho ke dosto ke liye khana banana so that i guess is never yeah. going to change even though i'm sure auntie totally understands your commitment and the requirement but some things yeah. i guess will never change in life so uh, uh, while speaking about that you also said that you've turned uh, vegetarian you've turned vegan for almost 2 years now how did that switch happen not uh, not vegan uh, particularly i mean i try and avoid dairy as much as possible i would say 90% of the time i'm avoiding dairy um it's basically to do with a, a lot of intolerances that my body has i got my gene test done my dna test done my food um, allergy test done so gluten was an issue lactose was an issue um but the reason for leaving meat was um, actually health related because my bones started to deteriorate in health very rapidly and okay. i had a issue we we played in south africa in 20 start of 2018 um and i had a cervical spine issue that had popped up um yeah. and then i got a couple of scans and tests done and and it said my body is too acidic and my stomach has started pulling calcium from my bones cuz it's not as alkaline as, oh. it, as it should be so to make itself alkaline it's it's pulling calcium from my bones and i had to get rid of uh, meat immediately i was in i was on seafood for a bit but i remember in july um july or august of 2018 is the time i completely left meat and to be honest i've never felt better i my recovery is better my my energy levels i feel like are great i'm able to you know train practice play day in day out and 
it's just amazing what it's done to my body and um, yeah ever since i turned vegetarian it's it's been a revelation for me i i actually didn't realize the the true power of of vegetarian food and and what a almost fully plant based diet could do to you and yeah the results have been absolutely amazing so that totally debunks the myth that to be a professional athlete or to have that kind of uh structure and power you you need to have meat that completely debunks it because you can always have your protein intake from other sources as well absolutely right i mean i i look it's you know for me it's it's more like a, a placebo uh thing um if you put it in your head that no matter how much vegetarian food you eat you're never going to feel powerful then you're not going to feel feel powerful yeah. if today okay. i sit in the room and i start feeling sick i'm going to get sick because that's the power of mind that's the power of your thought yes so i think we need to we need to see things the way they are and not not with concepts um concepts are well I, i'm not a huge fan of concepts because it was someone's <laughs> point of view and it, it necessarily doesn't have to be true or the only reality possible so yeah with vegetarian food the results i saw were, were amazing because i was open to it i didn't have any kind of um, you know uh, issues with it i didn't have any hesitations in whether i'm going to lose power and and all that kind of stuff i had no no kind of issues at all and oh, that's fantastic uh, now when you speak about uh, not being a very big fan of concepts which means that you have also i'm assuming you have also innovated a lot so is there a particular fitness routine that is completely virat you know like trainer ne nahi bataya kisi aur ne nahi bataya ye maine apne hisab se invent kiya because i really think that i like it and it gives me those results it's like trademark virat you know tomorrow i'm going to make money out of it <laughs> um no i i will not try to claim anything that my trainers have taught me um the the insight that i got into fitness big time was 2013 to 2015 is the time that i did stuff on my own and it worked but the stuff mm-hmm. that really changed the game for me in 2015 was um introduction to olympic lifting that was okay. for me you know as a cricketer i didn't feel like my hesitations were as normal as anyone else's but you know what if i get a muscle tear or a muscle pull or a ligament pull or something like that but the trainer i the, he was with the indian team is mr shankar basu uh he's from chennai and he worked with the rcb team for for many years so he knew me from a very young age so i had that trust mm-hmm. factor with him and he told me one thing he said this is going to literally change your life completely um the only thing i need you to do is trust just trust in me just give me two weeks and if you don't like it don't do it on the 15th day okay so i said okay fine he he taught me technique for a couple of weeks actually 3 weeks he taught me technique only with just a stick you know that we do good mornings and those morning stretches with all right just with that no weight at all and once he realized that okay i'm getting the technique right within a weeks time i was lifting 45 to 50 kgs i was doing cleans i was doing snatches and it was so amazing and the results i saw on the field i, I still remember i was chasing i was running behind a ball and while running you know how you f- how you feel like there's something happening and while running i felt like wow mm-hmm. my i feel so much power in my legs and i almost chased the ball down and it was a it was a proper shot played by the batsman i would have had no chance in the past and i almost got to the ball and i was like wow man this is something unbelievable i'm never letting go of it <laughs> so that really changed the game for me and i would recommend to anyone who's wanting to see physical results at a different level to learn olympic uh-huh. lifting learn the technique slowly and once you get a hang of it it is the most amazing thing physically that i have experienced and i would recommend to recommend it to okay. everyone else right you spoke about uh, uh, right now you're speaking about olympic lifting uh, previously you also spoke about the tests that you got done which told you more about your body what you should or should not have uh, do we currently have uh, an available enough infrastructure for this in india for maybe the general public also yeah of course um the lab is actually surprisingly in delhi uh that's where the the okay. sample collection happens it's called dna fit um and anyone can search it online okay. the offices in delhi they send you a kit at home you give your saliva sample 
and it comes back with all of the things that you you require from your your genetic uh, composition to um, lactose intolerance, gluten intolerance, um, alcohol uh, mm -hmm. intolerance, caffeine intolerance. You know whatever those things are, okay. it gives you a, a chart of everything that you should eat and shouldn't eat, and then you you get a, a normal blood test done for your food allergies. So if you if okay. you're not supposed to eat cashews, for example. <clears throat> and you're smashing a box of cashews a day. That's no good for you. That is, that's actually <laughs> taking you back. Um, yeah, that, it's yeah. a fact. I mean, it's amazing how how amazing things happen when you understand what allergies you have food-wise and what you don't. Because at the end of the day, what you eat is who you are. Um, and yeah, these things are available to anyone and everyone who wants to avail it, um, understand their bodies and their their allergies better, intolerances better, and then work around them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's quite a revelation. Well, uh, Virata, also speaking about your leadership. So this is, uh, we've known that you've been a leader for quite some time. You've led the under-19 team to the World Cup victory. You've been a vice captain very early. Then now you are the captain across formats. So is it like, I was always meant for this. The captaincy just comes naturally. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I don't feel any of those dialogues. Um, you know, but <clears throat> you, you, um, my journey has been actually a very interesting one. Um, I, I was made vice captain at a very young age. I captained under 19, um, when we won the world cup, um, I had captained age group cricket a lot. I had captain Ranji trophy as well, which is our first class cricket. Um, so I'd, I'd been captain in, in many places <clears throat> and it's something that came very naturally to me, um, because I felt like. You know, it's easy to just think of strategies and everyone, like even our, even the bowlers today know what field positions are there on the field. So you can easily just say, you go stand there, you go stand. It's, for me, it's not about that. Yeah. It's about leadership is very different. Leadership is taking care of the whole culture of the team. Leadership is understanding who's down and out and how, what you need to say to that individual to pick him up, make him feel like he has support, okay. make him feel stronger than he's feeling at that moment. Um, and the off-field stuff. You know, speaking to the younger guys at the right time, having right discussions with the seniors to pull the team through. All these kind of things are done, um, you know, at, at the at the background. I mean, these these things are not seen anywhere. These things are not heard about. So leadership for me came very naturally because I was always of, of, of the mindset that we need to win at any cost. Um, mm -hmm. And for that to happen, I'm going to do everything possible as an individual and I'm going to do everything possible to get my team at the same wavelength so that if 11 guys move forward in the right direction at the same wavelength, we're going to be unbeatable. Um, and when you're working on one single goal with focus and determination and your physical abilities to match that, it's a lethal combination. Then every other team is going to be very off. Hold on, these guys are coming at us. We have to be at our absolute best. And eventually at the highest level, that's, that's how you want to play cricket. You don't want to walk on the field saying, the other team feeling like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just, uh, you know, run them over. Mm -hmm. and, and, and walk all over that, you. That yeah. Was, no, that, that, that stopped happening. And then, you know, great things happen. So leadership more, is more off the field stuff than on the field stuff uh, for me. It's the conversation. It's how you motivate the team before an important series, mm -hmm. before a big tour. You know, you get there, you, you get their adrenaline going. Like, you know, they feel like, that, that flight should land right now in that country and we want to step onto the field rather than ah, thinking correct. what might happen, what's going to happen, whether we'll be able to do it or not. You get rid of all the doubts for them, make them battle ready and then, you know, walk right in front and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. But can one be born a leader or can a leader learn how to be one? I think, um, I think leadership, I, I wouldn't say qualities but a lot of people are very good very good um, at strategizing things strategy <clears throat> but I think to to take a whole team forward to persist with it on a daily basis is something which is it which is which you're born with naturally if you're too self-centered then mm -hmm. you can't do those things you know if you're too worried about your own right. performance your own stats your own numbers, then you can't think of the larger vision. For me, the most important thing is, I my goal was always 
just one. We need to be respected as a team. We need to be the top side in, in world cricket. We need to be respected as a yes. team. And we don't want anyone to feel like, as I said, that these guys are no good. You know, we can literally just dominate them and, and you know, run all over them. So my, my goal was simple. Leave the place that you entered in better than what it was when mm -hmm. you came in. You have to provide to it. You have to contribute something else to it to leave the culture in a better place because tomorrow when you leave the sport, how many ever years after, you don't want to feel like, man, what went wrong? You know, what's happened today? You have to make sure that the, the structure is so strong, like MS did for us. I mean, he created a legacy yes. for all of us. And now my responsibility is to leave that culture for the next generation to say, okay, Indian cricket should remain high. Indian cricket ka standard should always be high. Um, so leadership, you're, you're born with, I would say, but it's a mm -hmm. constant process. You have to learn. You have to learn to adapt. You have to learn to understand people. You have to learn to, you know, pick up things, how a, a, a certain person is reacting in what situation and what is it that I need to say to him to bring him to that level that I want him to be at. When is the time that I want this guy to move away and take time to himself, sort things out? When is the time I need to tell someone to, you know, pick themselves up, motivate right. them and then get them to do the work that should be done. So these are the learnings that on a constant basis, daily basis, you are always and always learning. And there, those are going into practice and we are seeing the results on the field. Uh, Virat, we have uh, a friend with us out here who wants to ask you a question and uh, I'm going to patch him in right now. His name is Mr. Amog. Amog, fire away. Hi, Virat. A big fan of you. Hi, and Great hearing so far. My, my question to you is a very, it's a simple one, but I want you to share an example as well, if possible. Intuition versus logic. What's your go through mantra? We actually had a conversation about this recently where I feel like if, you know, I, all that I've, I've been able to do on the field is not been only logic. Only logic is using mm -hmm. too much of your mind um, and your mind cannot always get you out of trouble when you need to be brave. You know, your mind cannot right. tell you to be brave. Only your heart tells, tells you to be brave. And there's so many instances where you need to be brave and take courageous calls, whether it's on the field, off the field, whatever it is. I've always followed intuition. To me, um, you know, so we, in, in cricketing terms, we say, we want to be solid. We want to be, um, we want to make sure that we're playing solid cricket, but in that we can mm -hmm. go conservative also very quickly because all we're worried about is defending and not getting out. For me, the word that stands out is determination because when you're determined, you will not play a bad shot, but you will score runs okay. when the opportunity arises. So determination arises from intuition. Determination is always arising from intuition. Logic takes care of itself when the when the mindset is right, when you're focused on what needs to be done, which is the right thing to do for the team in our case, or the right thing to do in your profession, not from a selfish point of view, but from a larger vision point of view, intuition will always keep you in good stead. And then this will kick in where you need to be smart. But if you only let this mm -hmm. dominate, then you won't be brave where you need to be. And you actually will become more and more conservative. So I would always tell people, play with your, always follow your heart, use your mind when it needs to be used, but always and always let your heart dictate where you have to go. And intuition comes from the heart. That's so well said, Virat. Thank you so much for answering that question in such a nice way. Uh, well, I'm afraid uh, everybody who's watching us, that's all the time we have right now with Virat because he is a very busy man. It was very nice of you, Virat, to give us your valuable time. Uh, I can only wish Pleasure. you all the very best. Go kick ass at the match and also a very happy homecoming to you for the happiness that's waiting for you back you. In, in your house. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was lovely chatting to you. Cheers. All right, that was Virat Kohli, speed devil, fitness fanatic, and a cricketing visionary. He has his eye on the future. He knows what he wants. And that is what percolates onto the team as well. And ultimately, it really is all about attitude, isn't it? Approach the future with a positive, can-do attitude like him and his team, and you can definitely make it your own.
I hope uh, that Virat's words have helped you get a clearer vision of what you want to do for your future and what we should be working towards in terms of mental and physical fitness and many, many other things that he spoke about. This is the goal of Visionarium 2020 to help you, me and all of us plan and prepare for the future and make it a better one. Thank you all for joining us in this conversation. You've been a great, great audience. And uh, of course, I'm going to ask you, request you that let us know what you thought about this interaction today. Give us your feedback on today's session with Virat Kohli. You can write to us on info at audiindia.in. And uh, yes, throughout, I've been saying this as well, that uh, please feel free. Another session's over, but I hope you've done that already. Taking pictures, screenshots, post it on social media, and you can tag us with the hashtag Audi Visionarium. And uh, hey, some of the best posts may get some fitness goodies from Audi India. So thank you very, very much. And I will see you soon.